As a pediatrician, I'm acutely aware of how children are some of the most vulnerable when it comes to climate change. And in particular, I worry about how their developmental phases and the fact that their bodies are smaller make them a lot more susceptible to some of the risks that we see when it comes to public health. So for instance, we know that the warmer months are increasingly long, summer is longer, and it's also hotter, which means that many of the vector-borne diseases, so those diseases passed by ticks, mosquitoes, and other vectors or insects, are circulating in our community for much longer than previously. This means that children and other people are gonna be at higher risk of things like West Nile virus and Lyme disease for longer periods of time than we'd seen in the past. In addition, we know that the risk from extreme weather like extreme heat and extreme cold are particularly dangerous for children as well as for elderly people and those with underlying health conditions. Extreme heat actually carries a risk of heat stroke and death and extreme cold um, as well can, can really be um, a major health problem for both children and others. So we know that it's really important for the body to cool off at night and ideally we like for the ambient temperature to be around 70 or less for our bodies to be able to cool off adequately for all of those important metabolic processes that our brains and our bodies go through when we sleep. We know that with climate change we're seeing greater numbers of days where the low of temperature does not drop below 70. So what that means, particularly for those kids who live in homes without air conditioning, of which there are many in our community, they aren't able to lower their body temperature appropriately. And so that means sleep is just not as efficient for them in terms of clearing out all of the waste products in our brains and our bodies that our bodies do when we sleep. And so this could really have long-term health implications that are really difficult to predict at this point. I would define climate justice as the understanding of how the climate crisis differentially impacts communities across the world and the difference in vulnerability among various communities to climate change. And what we see in Charlottesville and the surrounding counties, as well as through many parts of the United States, are huge disparities in that tree canopy. We see that wealthier neighborhoods, which tend to be neighborhoods with more white people and fewer people of color, have greater um, concentration of trees with large canopies. These trees provide really important shade for temperature regulations, and so they can help to offset some of the effects of extreme heat. And unfortunately, we do see those disparities, which mean that there's actually what we call heat island effect. And so when we look in urban cores across the country, we see that it's actually measurably hotter in the centers of those cities that don't have appropriate tree canopy as compared to the suburban areas. I think people talk a lot about weather. Um, I have a lot of conversations with folks who are surprised by the weather. And I don't know if people aren't kind of making the connection with climate change or are afraid to bring it up. And I think it's our job as professionals and as community members to really sound the alarm that it's not just the weather, it's the climate that's changing and that there's a bigger process happening here that we need to all be very concerned about. Speak up as much as you can, and that could look like talking to your patients, your family members, your community about it, but also writing op-eds in your local paper, volunteering to be on the news or on television programs. As a health professional, we have expertise because we're at the front lines. We see the health impacts of climate change. And so it's really important that we share our experiences and share what we're seeing, and also help to advocate both at the local and state and national levels around legislation that can really help to mitigate the effects of climate change and hopefully reverse it to keep our global temperature below a 1.5 degrees Celsius increase.